no. Well, dickhead's back. Yes, it is another Gilson v Pontus game. Every single year, once a year, without fail, the charlatan king of hack game development dutifully uploads a digital atrocity to the PlayStation Store. This year is no different, and we have what might be Gilson's worst game yet. As a quote-unquote developer, this guy is fucking amazing, because he doesn't get better with every game released. He doesn't even get worse with every game released. He just stays really, really fucking bad in different ways, even though he's largely producing the exact same game every year. And I don't quite know how that's possible. How do you do the same shit every year, sometimes being more competent at it, and sometimes being less competent at it, while maintaining a steady level of incompetence regardless? That's an absolute paradox. But at any rate, this particular game, which is titled Ashigaru The Last Shogun, is most certainly at the least competent end on the Gilson Incompetent scale. This is largely because it's missing most of the already threadbare features that you could expect to see in a Gilson-like. Oh, and that's what I'm calling these games now. They're their own genre as far as I'm concerned. It's called the Gilson-like. A Gilson-like is a third-person action game that takes place across one or more open-world style spaces. Spaces that feature nothing in terms of exploration or interactivity, and very little in the way of decorative features or terrain. The core gameplay of a Gilson-like consists of running for a really long time through this barren open space, before finding an enemy that will almost certainly one-hit kill you, after which you respawn and do the whole thing again. Sometimes you start the game in the map, other times you have to complete a slow walking section to get to the map so that you can start the slow running section and then die in one hit again. There are a few variants to the formula. Sometimes you die in two, maybe even three hits. Sometimes you get a horse. On very rare occasions, a Gilson like might give you some NPCs, though you can never interact with them and they're the same character model cloned over and over again. But the core gameplay loop of the Gilson like remains the same. Spawn, run, die. And nowhere is that formula more pure and less good than Ashigaru The Last Shogun, which does away with such distractions as blocking or dodging or having defensive capabilities of any kind, so that we may more efficiently reach the part of the game everybody loves dying in one hit. The Last Shogun may boast fewer features than any Gilson like to date, and perfectly represents Gilson B. Pontus's baffling tendency to add or remove features on a game-to-game -game basis even though the games are fundamentally the same, and the removals are basic features that you'd expect to find in any action experience. Why can't you dodge or block in this game? You could in other Gilson B. Pontus games. The removal of a dodge button is completely fucking arbitrary and makes the game next to impossible unless you consider that the point of a Gilson like is literally to die as quickly as possible. The game starts with the message never repeat the same tactic too many times in combat with the same enemy, except you're stripped of other options. There is only one tactic. Spawn, run, die, repeat. And I'm pretty convinced that the point of Gilson's games is indeed to die as quickly as possible. When you die in this game, you don't just start on the same map. Every time you die, you have to complete one of those long, boring corridor walks before spawning in a map. Only the map's different each time you die. Sometimes you get a horse to ride. Sometimes you're followed by a wolf that does fucking nothing. There are a couple of map variants, and with each death you cycle through them on a loop. And I'm just fucking amazed. I'm just, I, like, even though, as I said, fundamentally it's the same game every year, I'm almost impressed by how Gilson can surprise and confuse me every single year. How do you take a game that's already threadbare and bereft of content or features and somehow scale it back? How did Gilson find corners in his game to cut? You can't cut corners on a fucking sphere! And yet somehow this veritable phenom managed to do it. He took out dodging! 
He took he took it out. You just slash your sword now. That's all you do. Why is there sometimes a wolf? Like, what's the fucking point? It just follows you. It doesn't attack for you. It doesn't distract for you. It just follows you around like an embarrassing fart. One of the great frustrations of this guy essentially being a ghost outside of his game releases is the fact that I'll never be able to sit down with him and ask what goes through his fucking mind. If it wasn't for the fact that Gilson B. Pontus is a cowardly little bitch who once tried to take my YouTube channel down through a litany of bullshit copyright strikes, I'd have assumed he was some sort of rogue AI, algorithmically cobbling games together with a lack of true sentience. But no, not only is he a real person with thoughts and feelings and presumably dreams, he somehow has enough pride in his work that he once tried to remove my videos about it. That he tried to succeed where so many 2-bit hackfuck developers have failed and get YouTube to remove my content from its platform. And I've never done the same to him, even now. I wouldn't want his games removed from the PlayStation Store even though I'm utterly confused as to why they're there to begin with. On the contrary, I take an almost comfort from the consistency of knowing that every single year without fail the PlayStation Store will have another laughably impotent Gilson B. Pontus game for me to show you all. Now normally I jump on these games as soon as they appear, uh, it's been quite a few months since this game released, but as many of you know after I moved to the UK, Okay. I had real trouble finding my own place to live and it was impacting my ability to meet my workload. So I'm absolutely thrilled that I'm at least settled enough to finally bring this game to you for your enjoyment. Even if it meant I had to... <sighs> play it. Because make no mistake, these games aren't fun. They're fun to poke at, they're fun to prod at, they're fun to point and laugh at. But the entertainment factor can only be gleaned passively. As the poor dummy that has to play this shit, I can tell you they are beyond frustrating to play. Because every single year I make the mistake of approaching these games in good faith. I try and play them normally. I try and fulfill the objective. I try to kill the targets, knowing that my character only deals scratch damage and they can knock me out in one fucking hit, which they inevitably will. I know these games have no actual ending, that it's just the same shit over and over again. I know that every year I'm going to repeat the same tactic too many times in combat with the same enemy, and every single year it's going to irritate and exasperate. But that that is the life I chose for myself. I chose to be the chronicler of the Gilson-like, a veritable expert of a series and genre that appeals to nobody and matters nothing. Because ultimately, deep down, it is my duty. There's only one entertaining element of a Gilson B. Pontus game, and you're listening to their voice right now. And for that, Gilson, you're welcome, hun.